guys, this is episode two, and we're gonna prep the M112 supercharger to get it ready to go into my Lexus GS400. You've probably seen episode one by now. If you haven't, go back and check that one out. That's all about planning. That's all about everything you're gonna need to get this job done correctly. Today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drain the oil out of the snout. We're gonna actually take the whole snout off. We're gonna pull the rotors out and everything. And the reason we're gonna do that is because we have to cut the intercooler flange off. Now, if you watch Speed Academy, you'll know that they recommended a machine shop do it. I have called around and a lot of machine shops around here, they actually don't have the jig to hold this thing in place. I think I'm gonna give it a go myself. I'm gonna use a cutoff wheel and then I'm gonna use a flapper disc to sand it down level and hopefully that's gonna work. I'll walk you through the steps today to get the supercharger all prepped and ready to go in. This fill and drain plug is a T30. So you're gonna need a T30 socket. It's not gonna leak out until you tip it forward. Keep in mind this has an O-ring on it. Now remember when you take the snout off, the rest of the fluid's gonna come out. Okay, these are all 10 millimeter and you're going to also need a deep one for this stud version up there. <coughs> Extension on there. <coughs> so much easier with that. <coughs> I do want to note that these coming out of the supercharger definitely have some type of Loctite Okay, take a piece of wood and you can put it on the lip up here and then make sure you're not gonna knock your supercharger off of your workspace. Give it some hits and it'll start to separate here from the main body. It's coming. And there's the oil. <laughs> nice. Yep, make sure you have an oil container handy. <laughs> I don't care about this blanket, thankfully. This is your coupler right here. A lot of times you can replace those couplers, harder plastic, but this one looks pretty good. A lot of people replace them because you get some play in there. Okay, so you can take a wood block and bang on this top part and it'll start to separate. And then very carefully, you can take a flathead and I'm, I'm barely putting any pressure on this. You can see that this whole rotor assembly is gonna pull out. A case. Look at that. Right there. All taped up, stuffed with paper and microfiber towels. Ports are all taped off. That port doesn't go anywhere. We're just gonna try to keep all of this mess out of there. I even taped the underside of the bypass valve actuator. Let's do this. All right, you guys, this was just not cutting it, pun intended. Uh, my compressed air was running out, so I just couldn't get through this. I ran down to Harbor Freight and I picked up one of these angle grinders, four and a half inch for $10. It's like a Black Friday deal, even though it's not Black Friday. It can't be 10 bucks. I grabbed a pack of these because it has cutoff wheels, grinders, and flapper discs inside of it, all in one, 10 bucks. So out the door, it was $20. Let's see if this will work. Well, I learned a few things through that process. Strap it down if you can. That really helps it from moving from your work surface there. And be patient. Eventually you'll get it off. And now you go to grinding and then to flapper disc, which will make it smooth. Okay. 
Well, that was not fun. If I were you, I would take the advice of Speed Academy and have this done by a machine shop. Only reason I didn't is because it was gonna be about 400 bucks and a lot of machine shops never even called me back. So I just figured I'd do it myself. When you get down to where you've sanded this inner flange down, take a straight edge and bring it along here and make sure that you don't have any high spots. And then go this way as well and double check it. Then break all the sharp edges that are on the inside here, maybe with a file, and then take a wire wheel brush and go around this flange here. The gasket that I'm gonna recommend in episode one, it's an actual gasket. And I think that that's just less messy. I did nick it in a couple places because the disc jumped on me. And that's kind of a bummer, but that thick gasket that I'm gonna recommend should cover the seal that goes around this. So this seal here doesn't really matter. This seal here is what matters because that is what attaches to the Elate adapter plate. Okay, I'll get the wire wheel brush out and I'll go ahead and hit this and then we should be almost done. There you go, inner flange is gone. I brake cleaned it, sprayed everything out, took all the tape off. <laughs> now I have to put it back together again. So there it is, all right. Get your rotors set by lightly tapping with the rubber mallet. And then you want to make sure that they're freed up by spinning this. And then, of course, your fasteners that go in here will clamp this down. <clears throat> Don't forget your coupler. Suggest that you clean up your threads also because this has old thread locker on it. I should have done this a second ago. But you don't want that old stuff on there. I'm trying to hurry because that stuff is already set up. Don't forget your blue Loctite. First, you're gonna torque sequence it, going from the middle out in crisscross pattern. Torque to 15, crisscross pattern. Now it's set on 23 foot-pounds. Doing the same thing. Torque sequence inside out, crisscross. Once the supercharger is all prepped with the previous steps, the last step is to add supercharger oil to it. So I suggest propping it up vertically like this, carefully, don't let it fall over. And you're gonna need a T30 socket in order to undo the fill plug and then you're going to need 7.3 ounces of supercharger oil and I recommend this which is hyperlinked in my episode one uh, video description. We're going to go ahead and open these up get this thing put on and then squirt it into here. Once you're done squirting it into there I suggest laying it down flat again and then watching it for a day or two if you have that luxury to see if anything leaks, because that would be the time to redo the snout seal if you have to. Make sure that your fill plug has 
this little o-ring right here you can probably see that just poke a hole in the side of your container and it'll flow freely out the bottom still some fluid left in this bottle not much so I'll go ahead and cap it off I'm also going to save this you might want to save that as well just in case you need to do some future maintenance then we're going to take the fill plug and make sure it's cleaned off go ahead and thread it on there by hand I don't have a torque value on this but I want to say it's eight foot pounds so I'm just going to give it a little tighten turn there that feels pretty good don't overdo it no need I'm gonna set this thing flat and like I said before I'm gonna monitor it and make sure it doesn't develop oil leaks over the next day or two I'm gonna go over some things with you now on running lines and block off plates and things. So, okay, so let's talk about your bypass valve here. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but I, I put a little Lexus symbol on there. It's pretty trick, huh? One here too. This is some, it says fuel line on it, but it, it's, it can be used as vacuum line. I think the size is 530 seconds and you're gonna wanna run it out of the top of the bypass around to the bottom here. Now you can see I had to get crazy with this elbow. So that is a large port that's down there. You're going to need to reduce it. So I can't remember what size this is. I think it's maybe three eighths. I had this piece laying around, so I cut it. And then of course I used hose clamps on it. And then what I did was I have a barbed hose fitting here that I got at Home Depot. Fitting with threaded ends. It's male threaded ends. And then I got a female 530 seconds size barbed end. So this 530 seconds line is plugged into a barb fitting here and then of course I used a hose clamp thing because I had it and then I had this extra piece here I don't know what it was from and then the last thing is you're going to leave this port open on the bypass so I just put some foam there and I just didn't want like sand or something going in there it's probably totally unnecessary next would be this block off plate I made this and I painted it I'm just going to use red on this because I can't imagine why I would ever take this off. And then I had some fasteners laying around and so you just want to block that off and make sure that you use FIPG here. I just use the ACE and stuff from the trans swap. Down here is where the map port is for on the Ford and Travis at a late said this is actually a really good spot for you to run your PCV if you don't have an oil catch can if you have an oil catch can then you can do it the way I'm going to do it this is a great spot for a boost gauge you need a one quarter inch NPT tap and you're going to tap that right there and the reason you're going to tap that is because you're going to run a barbed hose fitting like this right there All right, I backed it out. Now we should have some clean threads to run this guy right into here. Get off there, okay. 9 16th deep socket. I think a regular might work as well. So my boost gauge is going to plug in, the line is going to plug in here. These screws are here just to plug it because they're open. So I just wanted to make sure that obviously there's no vacuum or boost uh, leaks. Use that hose, I don't know if it's called Teflon tape, but tape. Okay, so after you tap that, run your boost port vacuum gauge there. Uh, let's move on over here. You can run your PCV and EVAP lines here. You're going to need to get some appropriately sized lines. 
This is a pretty big one right here. I think that's like a half inch, that's huge. And then this one over here is probably three eighths. You're gonna need to make a couple trips probably to the automotive store to get the right sizes. And at the time of filming, I don't know yet how much line I'm gonna need, etc. So I can't show you guys exactly, but PCV EVAP here. And aside from that, that's about it because we've already covered the snout, the seal, the rotors are obviously in there. And there's not much else to tell you. We're gonna talk about this uh, cast elbow from a late that's gonna go right here. Then you're gonna be pretty much set to get the supercharger into the car once you're ready with everything else. This tool here is pretty cool. And basically how you do it is you put it on the stud like that, and then you're gonna take a 3 8 ratchet and put it in there and then take some channel locks or something similar and hold this side and you're actually going to loosen it to tighten it by holding. Okay, right there. And then you're going to give it a turn and that stud is going to come out. Studs back in the rear position and then I added hex heads up here. I like hex heads better because I can get wrenches on here. And when you fit the elbow up, it's kind of hard to actually get in to those hex cap uh, fasteners that were provided at a good angle. So I don't want to strip it out. Let me show you right now what I'm talking about. I'm going to put the elbow on so you can see it. See how the angle of that socket, the hex head socket would have been not ideal because it's contacting the elbow right here. But if I switch over to a wrench on a 12 millimeter, look at that. That works so much better. Same thing here. So there you go, that's my combination. You can pick yours. As long as this elbow gets held on properly with a gasket in between, it doesn't really matter how you do it. But I feel like this is a much better option. If you've seen episode one, you'll see that I recommend this Felpro 61202 gasket. And it just makes the install here much cleaner and you don't have to use all that FIPG goop stuff around there and worry about that. Guys, thank you so much for joining me on episode two, Supercharger Prep. You don't wanna miss episode three. It's gonna get real exciting. Be sure if you're not a subscriber to hit that subscribe button, drop a like, drop a comment, I look forward to seeing you on episode three.